Uh, tell us a little, about, a little bit about the second gen, what it's, what it's all about. Okay, well, uh, second gen is a coming of age story. Uh, it's about a girl named Jen. who moves out of home against the will of her very conservative parents with her best friend Mo. And it's about that, that time when you're going to your first apartment, you're getting your first real job, and you're taking your first real step into the world. Um, our main characters also happen to be people of color. So we take, um, we take an experience that we see a lot on our TV, but we spin the narrative a little bit because we're telling it in a voice uh, of a second generation immigrant. How does it feel to have your film here at the real world? It feels so good. I, this festival is so great and it's got such a great, um, such a great mandate in finding different, different stories that we don't always see. And I, 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 I think everyone's really positive here and it's a very, very positive experience for, for both of myself and myself. Kim, uh, you've been a notable icon here at the Real World Film Festival. Uh, uh, tell us, uh, tell us uh, your involvement with the Real World Film Festival, and of course, like, uh, how, how, how have you seen the progression of the Real World Festival all these years? Well, the Real World Film Festival, um, I remember getting a phone call. I was actually in Dominica, my mother's country. Um, it was winter time. And I got a call from Tanya D. Williams, and at the time I knew Tanya um, professionally, and I knew her a little bit socially. But you know, I'm in the Caribbean where she's a huge star. I mean, my grandfather's favorite person is Olivia. <laughs> so I got a call from Olivia. I had to call her back from my vacation, and she told me she was thinking of starting up a festival, the Rainbow Film Festival, and wanted me to be a part of the organizing committee. And of course, I was so honored that I absolutely said yes. And as soon as I went to the first meeting, I realized I would not have the kind of time that was necessary to really be a part. Of it, but I've been, a, you know, family and a supporter ever since, and I've made it to every festival. I don't miss a single one. Absolutely, absolutely. Now you're receiving the uh, Trailblazers Award I this am. year. I tell am. us a little bit about that. And what that? What that's about? Well, the uh, it, the Trailblazer Award is given to somebody who I guess they feel has somehow uh, blazed a path in their giving career choice, and um, as an actor, I've been doing this for quite some time, and I don't know. I guess I've laid a few bricks down, and I'm really honored. I'm really honored they're honoring my work. So Jeremy, you, your film uh, Destiny is the opening film here at the Real World Film Festival. Yes, so yes, can, yes. Tell us a little bit how that feels. It feels great. It feels absolutely amazing. You know, it's opening night, the crowd is here. You know, I'm excited. It's the first time everybody's seen the film for the first time. So right. the world premiere, so I'm excited. Tell us what inspired uh, this story. Well, I, I, I'm from Jamaica, but I, I live in Canada as well. So I kind of know both cultures. And I wanted to come up with a story that could integrate the two cultures. And also wanted to do a romantic drama and incorporate the music of Jamaica. So that's, that's, that was the embryonic stage of the, of, the, of the movie. And from that, you know, we just decided to write a love story. Uh, what, do you, what do you want your uh, viewers to take home with them once they see this film? How do you want, what's the message that you want to relate to well, well, that, um, you know, there, there, there's a couple things. There, you know, a lot of the movies that out of Jamaica have been really gangster and violent films. You know, so I want to, I want to show, I want to hear see another side of Jamaica on screen. So if they leave seeing that part of Jamaica, I'm happy. Uh, Be and Village really explores uh, skin tone and skin envy from two sort of different sides. So it's an animated film that I wrote for you. And basically, what happens in the film is two 11-year-old cousins uh, try to look paler or darker with using methods borrowed from their mothers. So it's animated. It's you, and you produced it uh, with this with three tiers of. Uh, strong females of three different generations. Um, so it's really a feminist film for for young women. Mm -hmm. uh, how's it feel to have your film here at the Real World? <laughs> it's so exciting because you know, I think one of the most exciting things about it. This isn't uh, a film about this isn't a film festival about one specific culture. It's a multicultural film festival. Absolutely. And that's exactly what my film is trying to do: try to open up conversations across the, in this case, color spectrum, because we're talking about skin tone um, and conversations that we don't normally necessarily have with people 
who are experiencing really similar feelings swelling inside them, but on the other side of the spectrum. So it's really, really exciting and it's such a one of them. Now, what do you want your viewers to uh, take home? What kind of uh, message do you want to relate to them when you when you when they go home and right. after they've watched this? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, for me, my film doesn't really propose any propose any solutions. Um, but I want people to be able to, to talk about these things and have these conversations sooner. Which is why I made uh, the film for uh, for young people so they can have these conversations about. Uh, skin tone about complicated things and how things make us make us feel um, earlier on. Um, so I and but also to take the takeaway that it is it is a complex thing that's not going to be resolved overnight. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I always wanted to start my own business. Um, I figured nine to five was something for me. me so <laughs> I decided to step out. I took a leap of faith and I followed my long term passion of baking, which I've been doing since I received my easy bake oven at the age of nine. So, I, I mean, there's a lot of people doing desserts now because of social media. Right? There's a lot of uh, a lot of pictures on Instagram of desserts and everybody doing their own cakes. What makes Shea Friend desserts uh, different from all the others? Absolutely. So our desserts have their own style. Um, so I say with passion style and elegance, we create customized gourmet dessert cakes and for um, whether it's a corporate event, a milestone celebration, um, that's something that we do. What are some of the, uh, your clients' favorites uh, in your uh, line of uh, cakes and desserts? Yeah, a lot of um, people have been asking for cake uh, ah. Yeah, they're quite popular. Cake pops and cupcakes, I must say, is still shiny. Uh, Mars is Laughing at Us is based on the Sammy Yateen incident that happened last July. Um, a young man was shot nine times by a Toronto police officer. Um, and so we were really inspired. Our story takes place on that night. It's loosely based on those events and it follows two best friends as they're forced to overcome their own ignorance between each other. I mean, this is basically an observation on people in Toronto, how they react to situations like these when they happen. And we follow our story through two characters who are best friends. And the story is about their relationship on this night. Not so much about the event itself, but the event itself arises responses from these characters where we get to learn a little bit more about their friendship, about their relationship, and why they choose to react the way they do on that night. Yeah. Um, this is about two characters that um, they meet over the course of a day. Uh, it's Evgenia, who's a Russian immigrant here in Toronto on a tourist visa, and she's working with Lionel, who's her immigration caseworker. And uh, she's trying to get her children here. And it's kind of how they, they interact over the course of the day and run into each other. It really is how the story ends and how two strangers get to know each other in very, you know, odd circumstances. So, how does it feel to have this film in the real, real world film festival? Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, I've actually now been a part of Real World for three years. Uh, I started through the Yash Shorts, and last year uh, I organized the thing as well. And then this year we just put our film in. So it's been an amazing experience, amazing platform to give uh, diverse stories a chance and to be a part of like a young collective through that. And uh, Real World has been working very closely with YA yeah, to develop um, our filmmakers' voice, which is also ultimately amazing. So. Uh, meeting Jack is about two people who seem to be hitting it off and they discover something about each other that they're not sure they can get <laughs> Tell us your involvement here at the Real World Film Festival. You're also a uh, programmer yourself. Yes, I produce the Yad Real World Programming with Kawa Ana. Uh, we're really excited. She has a fantastic organization at ACTRA. A bunch of uh, young actors get the opportunity.
opportunity to uh, create films, to write them, produce them, direct, starring. Uh, it's a really, really exciting time, and it's a really exciting opportunity. What are you, what are you excited about for this year's edition of Real World Film Festival? I just think it's going to be bigger and better. I just think, I know last year was a huge success, and I think this year we're just going to build on that. And it's, you know, the buzz, so many people coming out, so the films look incredible. Right. And I think it's just going to be a really great time. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're looking forward to your... Thank you very much.